This is Death Metal Chronicles episode International Cover-Up. That was a band called International Cover-Up, and you guys can check them out at the Big Sports Bar and Billiards in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That is on July 10th? What? Okay, July. I was was thinking it was already July. So July 10th at 7 o'clock. Um, I really like that song. It was pretty epic. What do you think, Jose? I thought it sounded like Jimmy Eat World. Ah, yeah. Was that was that just me? No, that's that's exactly what it is. That's that time period between yeah. 2001 and like 2005 when Jimmy Eat World and the Ataris. Uh, who else? I don't know. Saves the day. Yeah. Um. Weezer. Who, who could forget Weezer? Weezer's freaking epic. I, you know, I haven't listened to them in a long awesome. time. I haven't. What bands have you been listening to lately? I've been so out of the music realm. I've just been listening to a lot of hipster stuff, which is embarrassing, but... What's hipster stuff? Because I don't know. I really actually have no clue. Um, I actually don't know either, but I assume it's... I used to listen to MGMT, and I guess those guys oh, are... Oh, gross. Those oh, guys God. are hipster bands. But that one song they had, that one single, was, like, pretty epic. It's it's like a mix between chill music and just trying way hard to be different music. Like, way too hard to the point that it's so pop, it's so sugary, <laughs> it's that it, it hurts your soul? Yes. I don't know why. I can't handle pop. I, it just it hurts so bad. I guess I, I need that rhythm to, like, wake, wake myself up every day, get in that ritual. Uh, okay. You don't listen to, like, Bolivian folk songs when you wake up? Oh, no, I used to. I used to. I actually wouldn't mind listening to that. I haven't listened to any before. I would listen to that every once in a while when I'm I'm working. I need to check some of that stuff out. It's really good. My buddy had a post. So, Ranger Speaks had a cool thing. Ah, it's out in the public. Anybody can read it, so I'm reading it anyways. I asked if I could play it. I think he's working right now. Uh, He's overseas uh, as a contractor. Once a ranger, always a ranger. You don't ever leave. So um, there's a video from tacticalclips.com, and it's called The Gear Soldiers Carry. And I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, Let me open this up, see if we can watch it. So, on the episode, they're at Joint Base um, Lewis-McCord. I think that's in New Jersey? They deploy a ton of soldiers through there. Because uh, on the eastern seaboard, you can travel really quickly to the Middle East. You can get to Kuwait probably in, I don't know, maybe 10 hours or so from uh, Jersey. And in the video, um, they're showing you know, the IBA, all the plates that you have to wear, um, you know, you have your front your front ballistic plate and then your back ballistic plate. And, you know, I thought it was interesting. A lot of the Rangers, they only wear one plate in the front of them. They actually wear these, like, uh, these stripped-down plate carriers where all it is is, like, almost like a piece of plastic that really? holds it to your body. And they just have one plate in the front. Because the idea is, if someone's shooting you from the back, you've already failed. That is dumb. And that's their idea of it. it that's you know, what do Marines do? What do you guys wear? We actually wear one in the front, one in the back, and uh, our side under um, a rib cage. Oh, you actually wear your side plates? Yeah, I mean, you're supposed to. But <laughs> no, I do you how... actually wear them? I I don't think anybody wears them or anything. Because I've never worn them before. I refuse to. Yeah, I don't think anybody wears them. They get issued like everything, all those uh, all those things, but I don't think that they wear them. Because that's another fifteen twenty pounds that you're adding to yourself. Oh yeah. It was interesting, I thought, was the uh, in the video, they're showing, um, you know, all the the ammo carriers, and the average ammo that you carry is around um, 20 magazines or more. So that's, like, you're upwards into, like, 100-something pounds of gear. Just the equipment you need. That, that's just the stuff that you need, not the stuff that you want to have. Yeah. And that's not even water, either. Because, no. I mean, water's... 
you know, I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I've been looking at like, um, like the Ranger workout amongst like what they for, like when they force drink you when they make you drink yeah. all that water. Yeah, it's one liter, I think, one liter or one pint. It, it's pint. Uh, all I know is it's a freaking lot of water. So what's interesting is that a half a gallon of water is four pounds. So if your average daily amount is one gallon of water. That's eight pounds of water that you could you take in on a daily basis. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so when you're thinking about like this whole idea of like the shit soldiers carry, that's a lot of piss. It's a lot of piss. <laughs> you know, and that's kind of why they want little small soldiers. You know, because if you're only a hundred pounds or you're only 120 pounds, you only need to drink 0. 0.75 a gallon of water a day. Yeah. Because a hundred pound person only needs half a gallon of water. I thought it was interesting. So this is Ranger Speaks, his comments on it. Soldier combat load is not supposed to exceed 35% of body weight, ideally. Over the past couple decades, we went from wearing the LCE and PC, or boonie hat, and toting rifle with iron sights, to now looking like a medieval knight or EOD technician. Oh, yeah. (laughs) PPE saves lives, but risk aversion is in a command can leave soldiers overburdened to complete their mission and results in serious joint and musculoskeletal damage over time. <laughs> this guy's in his 40s. You said it all. Ranger Speaks is, is like in his 40s. He's in better shape than all of us and is still doing it. He's yeah. not a soldier anymore, but, I mean, he did it for 20 years. Yeah. Even though it's enforced, in the Marine Corps, like, no one still does it, you know. I own all my own I mean, gear. Who would? Because I mean, as That's a lot. contractor, I refuse to take all because they give you the same crap that yeah. they would give a soldier, and I refuse to take any of that crap. It's like I don't need any of it. Mm. What am I going to need this for? You know, like when is there going to be a time where I'm going to need to have like oh, they give us so much stupid like the groin protectors? Have you ever worn your groin protector ever? No. How about your deltoid protectors? I don't even know what a deltoid protector is. Goes on deltoids. Never seen those. It's hilarious. I've, if you see these guys like in the pictures of what you're supposed to look like, it's fucking dumb. No, he's right though. He, he hit it on the money, like a medieval art, like a medieval warrior. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the ranger idea of it. One plate in the front and a helmet. Because if you've been shot in the back, you failed already. You shouldn't even be out there. Your, your mission shouldn't even have been done at all, if it's that bad, you know. That's ridiculous. So an experiment for you guys. Go on the defense.gov website for contract bid awards. So if you're not, in the, you're not in the military, you're not a contractor, you're not involved in any way. Think about what is really going on in the world and where your tax dollars are going and why perpetual war never stops. <laughs> so today, June 17th, 2015, the Army awarded Global Dynamics LLC in Columbia, Maryland, $200 million firm fixed price contract award for registered nurse services to the San Antonio Military Health System. Funding and work location will be determined, blah, 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 at the Army Medical Command in Fort Sam Houston. Then down, uh, Cubic Applications, Inc., San Diego, California, awarded $76 million modification to a contract of support for Joint Readiness Center Operations Group training mission at Fort Polk. Um, so a place like this would be like a training center. So if you're like a bunch of Marines or a bunch of Army guys want to get trained before they go deploy, they have to go to this contractor and then this contractor trains them, which they got money from all those taxpayers <laughs> to go train them in the middle, you know, in the middle of Louisiana in a place where the average wage is about $5 to $6 an hour and a house still costs 500 to a million dollars to buy a house in Louisiana. So putting it in perspective... <laughs> You know, that's $76 million that could have just went to the people of Louisiana. Not saying that, you know, tax money should just go towards just shoving, shoveling it out. But isn't that what Cubic Applications is getting? Just a handout? 
from the government. The government. The government. <laughs> oh shit, Torres is still a company? So Torres Enterprise Solutions out of Falls Church was awarded six million dollars price contract for guard services. In Kosovo? Really? Really? We still have a fucking base there that hasn't been like eliminated yet? Camp Bond Steel in Kosovo is the biggest freaking base that America has. Just, I think it's actually bigger than El Paso. Which I went to El Paso. Jesus fucking Christ. It is literally the size of probably the whole entire city of Cleveland. Maybe the entire city of Washington, D.C. Mm. Landmass wise. And then, so I didn't know the land of the big PX actually exists. The land of the big PX exists. Where? And it's at fucking El Paso. <laughs> so imagine the biggest, like, super mall that you've ever seen in your life. There's bars. There's a scotch place. There's a haircutting place. There's a Hooters. There's a, in a an PX. Irish bar. There's a, a whole PX. There's two There's two different uh, AFIs that are there. Name, there's a Denny's. I mean, you name it, they have it. They have their own police department. They, and it's it's uncontrollable. This is like a service member's wet dream. Oh, yeah. No, 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 it is exactly. Because that's what, what they do to soldiers. When they come back, they keep them at Fort uh, El Paso to make sure they don't have any psychological issues or anything like that. But they're not allowed to go anywhere. They have to go. So they stay at the PX. And they have to stay on the base. They can't leave the base at all yeah. for any reason. They have to stay there for like seven days or like two weeks or something after they come back. That's crazy. Whereas contractors, we literally get off the plane in Dubai or wherever we go to take a vacation at. We just go off and do what the fuck we want. <laughs> Should have became a contractor. Oh, I was telling some of these guys no fucking way. They shouldn't ever do it for any reason. They make, more than, they make more than contractors. In, in terms of how much they well, get. So how much they're spending. College yeah. and oh, medical care. Okay, yeah. Housing, yeah. medical care for your family. Mm. The socialism part of it's huge. I mean, you know, you, <laughs> how are you going to survive if you're some ghetto kid named Dave Vaughn who is from Detroit? You know, what is he going to do? Work at McDonald's? Yeah. What is his realistic job that he's going to have? He's a black guy from Detroit. Well, you know, the, these people come from the shittiest places in America and then they're soldiers. Not saying that all soldiers are shitty people, but I'm just saying they come from very economically deprived places. You know? Oh, yeah. Did you ever meet any Bolivian Marines, by the way? No, actually. Really? Any so, Bolivians at all? No, mostly Mexican. Really? From Texas. <laughs> In California. Really? Yep. Did you meet any actual Mexican citizens that were working for the government? No. No, just Mexican-Americans. I thought it was interesting, all the uh, Nigerians and Kenyans and Ugandans I met who are still citizens of their country, working for our country. That was the most interesting part of it. So I call BS on this whole story. So, um, governmentexecutive.com, um, govx.com, contractors want guidance from feds on OPM hack. Uh, like federal employees, federal contractors are waiting for agencies to explain exactly what the OPM data breach affecting 4 million employees means for them. Everyone's on standby to find out if they're impacted, said Paul Walker, Senior Director of Homeland Security at Information Industries IT Alliance for the Public Sector. I know companies are working with OPM and the Office of, Man of Management and Budget, which is preparing government-wide cybersecurity guidance. Much of the government-wide work, Walker notes, was in progress before the OPM breach. Contract representatives say they're monitoring the National Archives, blah, 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 blah. This guy's just fluffing. Oh, DFAS is in, uh, in Cleveland, if you're from Cleveland, listening to me. Um, the Defense Finance Accounting Services, which is the accounting for all of the governments. Anything government, DFAS, and Cleveland does all of it. Whether your Social Security checks, your... Your Veterans Affairs benefits, everything comes out of there. Um, in March, the Homeland Security Department, whose network surveillance tool was Einstein, detected OPM breach 
updated its own acquisition regulations for handling sensitive information and put new requirements in contracts. Blah, blah, blah. This guy's just fluffing everything. It would be simple enough to say the contractors have to maintain all responsibility for all information protected, he poised, but what if a company that is not a technology company uses widely available commercial software for their financial management systems? Can they really be held accountable? What? This guy's a fucking jackass. He's a contractor saying that contractors can't be trusted with their own data, even though he's a contractor. He's the guy's a jackass. He can't be trusted, dude. And he can't be trusted either. Fuck this guy. So, okay, according according to um, what the mainstream news is talking about, OPM is basically the recruitment management side of all of the government. So they are the HR firm for the government, whether you're a soldier, whether you're an air soldier, ha 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 ha, stab, uh, whether you're a Marine or a contractor, OPM is in charge of all things HR for the government. Supposedly, there was some sort of breach, and the story goes that it was by China, and this Einstein system, which basically is real-time monitoring of networking. So what they would do is they would see, hey, someone's trying to SSH secure shell, which is, you know, going in through the tubes, hacking, hackity hack, 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 like, like that. You hear that sound? They're hacking, right? Um, they're using a terminal, they're SSHing into a server, and they're trying to get information. What they're not talking about is the fact that that is fucking impossible, okay? You can't go into a classified system. Because OPM is on a classified network. It's not connected to the internets. Okay? The, the information isn't part of the internet. It is part of the intranet of the government. Do you think it was an inside job? Oh, man. <laughs> we need a good Alex Jones quote. <laughs> Let's go on alexjones.com. Let's see what he's got to say. <laughs> Fucking Alex Jones. There's a war on for your mind. What does he? What does he got to say? Oh man, I should have said the Biden single most important thing. Obama and I can do this to get the handle of the climate changes. What does he got to say about ISIS? Oh yeah, by the way, this uh, this episode sponsored by ISIS. Uh... <laughs> I love how we're all ISIS now. Anybody who goes on the Twitters. Are now part of ISIS. I didn't know that. Essentially, everybody's ISIS now. It's fucking stupid. Like, some kid in his basement puts up a photo with the ISIS flag, and now he's a fucking terrorist, you know? Holy shit. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's it's disinformation is what it is. It's like... It's propaganda. Well, yeah, because... Uh, ISIS can't possibly be anywhere and everywhere. This is dumb. Like, and just because some kid puts up a photo of a flag with the ISIS flag doesn't mean he's fucking out schwacking, you know, Americans. I would like to draw attention to the process of activating and expanding influence zone of international terrorism. Brodkinoff said during a meeting at the CIS Anti-Terrorism Center, the Islamic State is currently at its core. It creates cells in different regions in the world and openly states that it intends to destabilize the situation in, the, in CIS and Central Asia. The Kurds believe up to 80% of ISIS groups in Syria are formed of the Northern Caucasus and Middle Volga? I don't know what that, I don't know what Middle Volga, I should know this, some fucking analyst, I don't know. Uh, remarks reveal that the true target of ISIS is not the United States and Israel, but Russia. Okay. Accused the CIA and other Western intelligence agencies of exploiting social media to recruit Russian men into the Islamic State. Why? Oh, subversion. It's the best fucking way. What you do is go to some Saudi Arabian kid and you say, hey, I know that you're disillusioned by whatever. We want you to go to Russia as ISIS, and then you go to Russia as ISIS, and then you, hey, tell us what these people are doing, you know, okay, what trade deals are going on? Who is Russia trying to gain dominance with? So whether it's Kajakistan, or Qatar, or whatever. Right, and then Russia. that, yeah, or even Russia itself, you know, like, what things are going on there. And you'd use some kid, you know, who's like 19 or 20, he's got a degree, 
But now he's ISIS. He's a fucking terrorist now. You know. Goddamn terrorist. <laughs> Alex Jones. U.S. looking for contractors to help in Iraq. <laughs> Civilian advisors contracted hel helicopters on the Pentagon's shopping list to help in Iraq. Actually, some things that most people don't know, I know, is that in Iraq, on one of the bases there, um, AECOM, if you look it up, they're like this big, giant uh, company. They're the ones who built, uh, I think they built the new World Trade Center monument. Mm -hmm. um, they built the largest ever transit station in New York. And they're kind of like a general contractor of all things. But they also do helicopter maintenance. And AECOM has had a contract there in Iraq the entire time that the war in Iraq is going on. Really? The entire time. For helicopters? For helicopters. Sweet. Hey, it's cool, man. That's the only way you can get in and out. I mean, it's, and they're providing, you know, that service so that Department of State can keep their helicopters going and things like that. I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, not a lot of people know about it because they weren't there, but I was there last military person was there. Other than the SF guys, those guys were there, but you don't get to see them. They're all in like, they're probably working for Coca-Cola or whoever. I mean, as a guy, as a, doing their cool cool guy jobs, you know. Like the Marsoc dudes, they don't wear their Marsoc uniform around. I mean, they wear yeah. like civilian clothes and yeah. have cool beards and shit, you know. I wish I could grow a beard. You should grow yours, Jose. It, it looks like peppered steak. <laughs> it looks gross. You just gotta like grow it out, man. Just stop, man. don't touch it. And grow I, it. I've tried, and it looks like just, ugh. No. So you could be a sweet Marsoc guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Overall, there are about 5,000 mainly mainly State Department contractors. I love that kind of statement like that. It's like, oh, it's, there are State Department people out there doing, you know, political work, helping the children, building fucking schools and shit, you know, not running missions. Oh, no. Relatively modest footprint. Uh, compared to previous years, where the overall 160,000 during the height of the fighting, there were also 54,000 civilian contractors working across the Middle East for... God, that's so good. That's awesome writing right there. It just, it, in a couple of sentences, just swaths right over all the things that are going on. Like, only 54,000 people? F fucking bullshit. There's 2.2 million people that are working for the army alone. Or for the, for the uniform services, about 2.2 million. Mm. And it's double or triple that for the amount of contractors. Then you go to, like, pseudo-contracting things, like the scientific research stuff, the STI, or whatever their acronyms are, the Scientific Research Institute, which are government institutes. You know, or then you've got, like, uh, the Berkeley the Berkeley Centers and stuff like that, or DARPA scientists. They're technically contractors, or whatever. And they're not included in those numbers at all. It's just like, oh, you know, it's political. It's, you know, it's nice. It's cute. What are your thoughts on Iraq? I'm too busy working to think about Iraq. <laughs> I'm brainwashed. You're brainwashed by the media. You need to get a little dose of Alex Jones. Mm. Let me get some Alex Jones. <laughs> well, screw that. Let's do some military times roulette. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you want the fucking news? You go to Military Times. <laughs> These fuckers. Oh, there we go. Marine guilty of murder and re retrial for 2006 Iraqi civilian killing. Camp Pendleton... You, you, you're a fucking Marine. Read this. You can read it. Camp Pendleton, California. A military jury has found a Marine sergeant guilty of murder in the retrial of a major Iraq war crimes case involving the 2006 killing of a retired Iraqi policeman. The jury of three enlisted men and three military officers deliberated for over three hours Wednesday before reaching the verdict in the case of Sergeant Lawrence Hutchins III. So they have enlisted and officers in the jury. I didn't know that. Because he's a what? Sergeant. He's a sergeant, so that yeah. it's probably equal, I guess. That's ridiculous. Well, because a, an officer can't just... Yeah, but it's a war crime, so why are military... Whatever. No, because he's under the Uniform Code of Justice. Yeah. He's not in the... 
<laughs> justice of the people. I thought I thought they would go higher though. Then probably wow. depends on the severity of the of the crime. Because if it's only one person, yeah, it's not like it's twenty five people. The defense argued the military inquiry was shoddy and did not support his allegiance. His allegations that Hutchins and his squad killed 52-year-old Hashim Hebrim Awad from the village of Hamdana and then planted an AK-47 rifle next to his bullet-riddled body to make it look like he was an insurgent. I bet that shit went, or happened a lot. Well, understanding the rules of engagement in Iraq... At the time, most I don't know when this was. Um, 2006. 2006. So, okay, in 2006, it was a full-blown fucking war. And, and yeah. the Marine Corps ROE was, any fucker that looks at you bad, shoot him. Why? Because you can't maintain dominance over an area unless you go in and fuck shit up. That's the idea. That's how military people would explain it. Because the idea of the Marine Corps isn't to be friends and family and have chai tea and, oh, hey, that's a that's a cute lady boy you have over there. It looks great. How, how, tell me about your goats. You know, that's, that's the actual reality of Afghanistan or Iraq. But it's not like, I mean, it, it can't be like that because what's your job? To kill shit. To kill shit, right? I mean, your job isn't to be nice and friendly. I mean, you're an accountant, but, I mean. That's okay. Your job's still to fucking kill, you know? Yeah. Hutchins was convicted of murder and the death of Awa, the six other Marines in the Navy Corpsman and his squad served left in 18 months locked up. All but one of the foreman, the former seven squad mates has refused to testify again in his retrial. How did he get a retrial? That's weird. Many have said now that they do not stand behind the statements they gave to the military interrogators in 2006. Major Sampson Newsom argued for the prosecution of investigators spent hours at the crime scene and in the village but were misled by Hutchins after he lied to them. Wow, this guy fucked up a lot. Saying the shooting was justified because he had fired upon them and had been digging a hole for a roadside bomb. God, I feel bad for this dude. The... Cost military officers weeks tracking down the crime, he said. But investigators that secured the correct body, correct weapon, and testimony from squad mates supporting allegations that Hutchins and his squad set out to find an Iraqi man to kill that April night. News some juror told jurors. Prosecutors said Hutchins shot the man three times in the face and then bragged to his squad mates about getting away with murder. Well, I guess either way, he was released again for a few months after highest court ruled interrogators had violated his rights by keeping him in solitary confinement. Prosecutors argued that Hutchins waived his right to counsel at the time and willfully told his side of the story without coercion. Still doesn't separate out the fact that these guys put him in solitary confinement. And, okay, and understanding what solitary confinement means at that point. Solitary confinement means that they put this guy in a fucking connex, okay, and chained it. And when they wanted him to have water, they gave him water. And when they didn't want him to have water, they didn't give him water. Because solitary confinement in a war zone is not, oh, he's at prison. In Iraq, most likely this means he's a fucking connex. For those who don't know what a connex, connex is the semi truck trailer, where they throw somebody in a fucking you know semi truck trailer with no you know no blankets, no nothing. And Iraq's cold as shit at night; it gets freezing as hell. And in the daytime, it is 140 degrees, and you want to die. Like you literally cannot breathe. It's that hot. That sucks. So this is why your body acclimates to it. Well, mostly, if you're working in Iraq, your body acclimates to it entirely. Where you start going to sleep at like 3 o'clock in the morning 
and then waking up at like six o'clock in the afternoon finally when it's like you know the sun's going down because it's so fucking hot so he was in and out of uh, the brig since 2006 that is a long time for a trial yeah and this is why we need to end the standing army in my opinion because it'll be okay the u.s military code of justice is not a just system no it's not at all and the military idea of saying oh well if these people were put in front of regular regular civilians meaning not citizens you know they're putting regular fucking citizens then they wouldn't get a fair trial but would they get a better fair trial if they were put in regular fucking people like this guy explains hey our job was to go out fuck kill somebody that night that's our job doesn't matter who we kill as long as we kill somebody because mm. his job isn't to be a peaceful human and to go out and like oh that's a nice chai boy oh tell me his name you know fucking bullshit military times roulette for the win Can't believe you spelled double blog wrong. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Seventh Cavalry Regiment hosts Trail of Tears Memorial 5K. <laughs> it's so wrong. Fort Hood, Texas. Thousands of people commemorated the 19th century forced march of Native Americans. <laughs> With a brisk jog at the second annual Trail of Tears Memorial 5K. The annual event is hosted by 1st Squadron, 7th Cavalry <laughs> Regiment, based out of Fort Hood. It is billed as both a fun-filled family frolic and sober reminder of the series, series of mandatory uh, relocations mm-hmm. following the Indian Removal Act of 1830. The Trail of Tears <laughs> Memorial 5K began and will continue to provide a way to honor those who perished in this horrible and regrettable chapter of American history while keeping today's soldiers mindful of the Army's unfortunate role in it, said Lieutenant General Sean McFarland, commander of Fort Hood, during his opening remarks. Look at all these excited faces, he added as he looked around the crowd and pointed it to a large family. Wow, looks like you brought the whole tribe here. (laughs) Ha ha ha. Now who's ready to get chased off their ancestral lands? Wow. The run began with the regimental band <laughs> striking up Gary Owen. I don't know that song. I should, I should know this. I don't know. As a mountain squad of U.S. Army soldiers began shooting pistols in the air and horse whipping the last runners Holy shit. past the start point. They went all out. All the money raised will go to support the research into vaccines for communicable diseases. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> like the blankets that the army soldiers gave. Yeah. Oh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> Explain Lieutenant Colonel William J. Custer the third event <laughs> organizer. <laughs> We're going to try to wipe out some of the diseases that devastated so many early American peoples. <laughs> Custer also expressed his gratitude to the Washington Redskins owner, Daniel Schneider, who provided key sponsorship for the event after the Dallas Cowboys backed out, citing bad taste. No way. (laughs) All that I know I can say is wow, runner Roger Hamtown said at the finish line as he sipped a chilled Gatorade. (laughs) I've also completed the the Baton Death March ultra marathon and they're both just like the real thing look how badly i'm sweating damn oh god so good this is why i love double blog i'll take real events real history turn it into one and just fuck with you as much as i can what else they got on the double blog Safety first. We let extremists torch three U.S. flags to see which brand was the most flame resistant. (laughs) 
Flag Day has been a day of honor to the fl- to honor the flag of the United States ever since the Second Centennial Congress officially adopted our beloved Stars and Stripes on June June Fourteenth, seventeen seventy seven. And there's really no better way to pay respect to the old glory than to make sure your cherished flag is flame resistant, <laughs> so as to guarantee a long and patriotic life for your natural ensign. Wow. <laughs> I actually go through all these tests that they did. <laughs> it's What's so a fun good. fact? Fun fact. Today also commemorates 240 years since the United States Army was established. So he also brought a sweet army airborne flag made by Jin Tang to celebrate. Like the flag from our sep- second test, though. This one was also made from polyester, so we'll just let you guess the outcome after we held it up over our 240-lit birthday candles. <laughs> Holy cow, this is actually real. I think this is like a Chinese distributor. Professional flag manufacturer, Jinteg Flag. Is that where we get our flags? Jensen Flag is one of the top manufacturers of flags in China. All of our <laughs> custom-made flags are made to the highest quality materials on the market today. This is why I love American nationalism, because you can't just attribute value towards, hey, this is an American flag. It's made in the image of an American flag with all the dimensions of an American flag. But God forbid it be from China. You know, like, as if it's less American. Like, fucking bullshit. Like, That's so American. Fuck nationalism. It's stupid. It makes no sense. <laughs> That's my opinion. So yeah, going through the news, I find it complete bullshit that OPM number one was hacked by China. Can't possibly have happened. And number two, <laughs> there's no fucking way they have classified information. That's stupid. <laughs> now, they might have unclassified information of names and things like that. Like a, it was probably most likely a file. Well, on a server somewhere. Who knows? But you guys should check out that band that I had put out, which was, jeez, International Cover-Up. Those guys are awesome. They're from Sioux Falls. And if you had the chance to go to their concert, um, definitely check it out. They're freaking epic. Anything you've got to say, Jose, for our viewers out there? I miss doing this. This is fun. Yeah, man. This more, now, now you're living back at home. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, but for a, a, a good cause. You're helping out your mom. Yeah, she went out. Of, she's going out of the country, so she wants somebody to babysit the house and to watch over her company. Hell yeah! What do you get? What do you do for her company? I um, make sure the schedules are out, do payroll, basically manage the whole thing. For the remainder that she's gone. She has a house cleaning service? Yeah. It's tight. It's actually pretty good money. It's really good. I, I'm actually thinking about doing it myself when I get back to Richmond. But then, you know, you need workers and investment at the beginning. But, so I don't know. Plus, you need to know people. But it's better than marining around. Oh, yeah. Being a jarhead isn't very good. It sucks. Stand here. Do this. Yes. Go over here. No, don't go over there. Go here. You're not standing correctly. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> but it's okay. It's getting better. So don't become a Marine. Learn skills in accounting. Join the Air Force. The yeah. Chair Force. The Chair I'm Force. To become an Air Soldier. Yeah, Air Soldier. At least you get paid more, I think. They could pay more. They could pay like three or four hundred dollars more. Yeah, probably. I don't doubt. I don't it. think it's too much more, but it is enough. I mean, but most people don't even go in as E threes. I, I bet they go in higher than that. Most people probably go in as E fours. Yeah, probably. Because they all have degrees. Most of them. I've never met an Air Force guy without a degree, ever. They all have degrees. They're all. I forget what they call it. Mechanic sergeants or technical sergeants. I think technical sergeants. Yeah, they're like E fours going on E five or something like that. I don't fucking. It's something weird. Because they, yeah, they don't have corporals, I think. Oh, yeah. 
I think I'm just a contractor. I have no clue. I don't know. <laughs> I just work with these guys. Specialists, maybe? Yeah, I think they go... I, I, don't, I don't know, know the Air Force ranks. I, don't know, the Air Force I know that you go either. from a chair to stand <laughs> to a chair. <laughs> as a chair force soldier. That's okay. <laughs> this has been Death Metal Chronicles International Cover-Up Edition. Please check out that band. I will link it. And next week we will have a, another band which is indefinite hiatus. These guys are pretty sweet. Hope you guys have an awesome weekend and enjoy. Oh, and check out my other podcast, which is Sex Positive Christian. Check it out. If you're into relationships, love, sex, and like sweet, that's like going to find shit.